Hello class, today we'll talk about polygons. We all know that a plane is a two-dimensional figure that is unbounded. But if it will be bounded by straight line segments, we form a two-dimensional closed figure called polygon. The word polygon came from two Greek words, poly and gonia, with, which uh, re literally means many angles. We have different parts of polygons. The first is called the side or edge. It is one of the line segments that make up the polygon. In the figure on the upper right, you can see that there are five sides or edges. The next is called vertex. It is a point where the sides meet. So the blue point here is called the vertex and on the figure we have five vertices the next is called a diagonal this is a line connecting two non-adjacent vertices so the green line here on the figure is called a diagonal why because it is a line formed between non-two adjacent vertices so in the figure, how many diagonals can we form? Yes, we can actually um, draw five diagonals in the figure. The next part is called an interior angle. This is an angle formed by two adjacent sides inside the polygon. So in the figure, you can see that there are five possible interior angles yung nasa loob ng mga angles na napo-form ng dalawang edges or sides. The next one is called exterior angle. It is an angle formed outside the polygon by one side and an extension of an adjacent side, the supplement of an interior angle of the polygon. So you could see here that with the given interior angle, there is an exterior angle which is a supplement of the given interior angle. The next part is called a central angle. This is an angle or the angle subtended by a side about the center. So pag nagdraw kayo ng angle using the center of the polygon, you can form what we call central angle. How many possible central angles in the figure? Yes, we can actually form or draw five central angles. The next is called apothem. This is the segment connecting the center of a polygon and the midpoint of a side. The apothem, apothem is also a perpendicular bisector of the side. So here, if you will locate the center here and you will extend a line, which is the midpoint of this side, that blue line is called apothem. Apothem is very important on the following formulas or on the preceding formulas. Polygons are said to be similar if their corresponding interior angles are equal and their corresponding sides are proportional. Para kang nagre-resize lang, pero yung mga ratios, ng mga sides and angles hindi nagbabago because of that we can actually have different formulas or equalities for these similar polygons on the first one if two polygons are similar their corresponding sides are always proportional so x sub 1 may represent the smaller and y sub 1 may represent the longer side. For letter B, A sub 1 represents the area of the smaller and A sub 2 represents the area of the larger polygon. Please be reminded that you could manipulate these formulas and recreate your own depending on the value that you needed. We also have types of polygons. The first is called simple 
and complex polygons. A simple polygon has only one boundary and the sides do not cross each other. Otherwise, it's a complex. This is a simple polygon and this is a complex polygon because two sides intersect each other. We can also classify polygons as to convex and concave polygons. A convex polygon has no internal angle more than 180 degrees. If there are any internal angle greater than a straight angle, then it is a concave polygon. Notice that the interior angles in this figure are all less than 180 degrees. Therefore, this is a convex polygon. In this figure, notice that this vertex can form an angle greater than 180 degrees. So this angle is a concave. We can also classify the types of polygons as to regular and irregular. Regular polygon is one whose sides are all equal and whose interior angles are all congruent. So the figure on the right side is a regular polygon because all the sides are equal. While the figure on the left side is an irregular polygon. We can name polygons according to the number of their sides. The smallest one is called triangle or sometimes called trigon. Next is a tetragon, tetragon or a quadrilateral. Pentagon, hexagon, heptagon, octagon, nonagon, decagon, undecagon, dodecagon, and so on. Notice that the, the prefixes are changing depending on the number of sides above a given base polygon. Two of the most practical applications in polygon deal with perimeter and area. So if we're going to solve problems here, we'll all, always look for the perimeter and area. Perimeter is the length around the boundary of a closed two-dimensional region. So the sum of the length of all the red sides here is the perimeter. And the amount of material that would be needed to cover a surface completely, which is the blue area here, is called the area of the polygon. We have different formulas for polygons, but we will focus our computations on regular polygons. What are regular polygons again? These are polygons with equal sides. Here, it provides the perimeter for the regular polygon. P represents the perimeter. N represents the number of sides. And S is the measure of of one side. If you are finding the area of a particular polygon and the perimeter and apothem are given, you just need to use the formula A equals one half perimeter times the length of the apothem. But if only sides and the length of one side is given, then you can use the formula A equals x s squared times n over 4 tangent 180 degrees over n. But you need to make sure that your calculator is in degree mode. Again, you need to make sure that your calculator is in degree mode. If the missing value is the apothem or the missing length is the apothem, the formula is S over 2 tangent 180 degrees over n. S always represent, represents the measure of one side. And n is the number of one of the sides. If you are finding the number of diagonals that can be drawn inside the polygon, the formula is D equals n over 2 
times n minus 3. If the number of triangles that can be formed by diagonals drawn through the same vertex, the formula is t equals n minus 2. If you are finding the central angle in a regular polygon, the formula is theta sub c equals 360 degrees over n. It's the measure of each central angle. And since it's a regular polygon, finding one of the central angles is enough. To find the measure of each interior angle of a regular polygon, the formula is theta sub i equals n minus 2 over n times 180 degrees. If you are looking for the sum of interior angles, the formula is i sub s equals n minus 2 times 180 degrees. And these problems will be solved in the next video.